Hundley holds, steps up, Hundley sacks T.J. Watt! NFL history! Watt has tied Michael Strahan's single-season record. Oh, no! In the air to right, this is deep, and he did it again! Jack Selinski wins it for the Pirates! Three home runs in a game! pause welcome to our live pittsburgh sports line show in the bp tv studios 5100 west library avenue the municipal building police station is on the right we're on the left up above the library mayor's office and admin offices are up there so this is where we're at we've been doing this show for 11 years i'm proud and honored and uh, we just had a great banquet, and somehow I won an award for <laughs> Pittsburgh Sports Line doing a Taekwondo show at the zoo. I won an award for the 5A back to back Bethel Park Baseball Blackhawks. We got one of the ball players in the control room, Buck, and uh, won a few other awards for my uh, talking machine show and a by request show. So thanks to everybody in Bethel Park. Thanks to my BPTV team and my co-hosts and everybody helping me out. It takes a team to win. Like, I can talk, but I need a cameraman, I need audio, I need video, and I need somebody to edit this because uh, sometimes my buddy, we won't talk about smoking, but <laughs> we're here. Thanks for watching us on Comcast 7, only in Bethel Park. Thanks for watching us on Verizon 32 in Bethel Park and all the way from Cranberry, Wexford, to Nemecolon, and greater Pittsburgh area. So we appreciate all the likes on our Facebook page. Somewhere under 7,000 likes is what we have, and we appreciate every one of you. And we're doing Facebook Live every Tuesday night for the past year. Thanks to all of you watching the show, and as I get feedback, I'll check my phone to see what's going on here. So. We'll see what's happening and who's watching us. So thanks again to all that. And I'm Al Levine, the talking machine. We only have one camera tonight. And we got Steve Fisher, who used to work here. He volunteers. He's now working out and making money out in the North Hills, a company that helps nonprofits. And he's an accountant doing that. Can we get a witness? Uh, smoking Jim, the only witness you need is because you're in witness protection plan, and we can't find anybody legally. Steve Fisher's an honest man, unlike you, and we got witnesses and all the people that we need to know, but he's running the cameras, and look at what he's doing for us, and he doesn't even work for BPT anymore. And he's been at our banquet event also, which was nice. Everybody asked the one question they ask at every banquet. Where is Smoking Jim? Uh, I thought you were going to say the food. No, the, <laughs> Sid West. No, Sid West is the best caterer in Bethel Park in our area. I always take food home. One of her best treats is carrots. You mm. have to try her carrots. They're just so sweet and delicious. Always good. And Dave Cable always asks me, he goes, are you sure you asked Smoking Jim? I go, every time before the banquet, I say, we're having it on Thursday. See you there. And he makes no comment. <laughs> so now here's the smiling, non-eating, smoking Jim Frazier. And we got Steve Wirt here who does sports memories, and he does a podcast. What podcast is it? It's a Pittsburgh Sports Memories podcast, and you'll find it on Spotify, iTunes, anywhere you can find a podcast you can. We're on Facebook and Twitter if you want to. Check us out there, too. Well, you know, if I'm not talking, I'm not promoting. <laughs> so we got that in there, and smoking gyms everywhere. He forgot to tell me about the Pittsburgh City League Hall of Fame. So I had a good friend of mine tell me all about it, and it was unbelievable like usual. And he told me a few dozen things, and I said, 
I know who's in charge, <laughs> so I understand all the different things that you're telling me. <laughs> I'll share with you after the show. Okay. <laughs> all right, we got some promos. Let me see if I got anybody and can see. Uh, no, I'm not seeing anybody on here yet, but I'm sure you're out there. I'll need help, but all right. First up, we got Steve on here. He'll pull up Olive Oil's Pizzeria. We'll see, we got Buck there. All right, looks good with my red shirt. Look at that. <laughs> Olive Oil's Pizzeria, Hillcrest Shopping Center sponsors us with an XL pepperoni and pizza and a steak hoagie cut in six cuts. Call them 412-831-1900. Uh, Frank's son Frankie there made us our pizza and hoagie and Rico, he makes us every week too. So thanks to all of them. All right, next up, we got a 501C charity called Always Be Smiling. The B stands for Bennett and We'll get that. And he died at 16 and a half. He was a handicapped child, had two kidney transplants. Very great work, Steve. You're on fire. We appreciate you. And that's Bennett there. He never had a bad day. He was always smiling. So his parents started always be smiling. I pumped him up with 400 likes to over 1,200 likes by all of you friends liking it. So, Steve, now that you heard about it, like always be smiling. All right, another 501c3. We'll see how Steve does on this one. Let's see what he does. Bethel Park Historical Society Schoolhouse Arts and History Center. Look at that pick. He caught that from the History Center to the Bethel Park Historical <laughs> Society. Perfecto, three in a row. 2600 South Park Road, red and white trolley. Yes, a trolley, not a T. I rode on the trolleys, I'm that old. So you hey, see no, it right I, there? I rode on a trolley too. So. Well, you're young. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate your input. I'm trying to make you feel younger. <laughs> well, I don't act uh, my age to begin with, so you pump me up even more. That's why I was so quick. You know I'm one of the quickest counter punchers in the business. There ain't nobody stopping me. Put anything out there. But check it out. They have a dance studio. They have the best coffee place in the area. Reginald's Coffee. I get green tea there. But all my friends love their fresh roasted worldwide coffee beans. They do it in their business. And it's better than Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, any shop around. My friend, hundreds of my friends have told me, you know I know lots of people. All right, let's see what Steve can do on this. All right, we end each show with Stay Joey Strong. It says DIPG, it's a dreaded brain cancer. It killed Joey eight years ago when he was eight years old. They've raised over $100,000 to find a cure. You can go to Joey Favis Childhood Cancer Foundation and uh, donate money, time, whatever. Go to their Facebook page like that and see their events. Their family's doing great things to try to overcome this dreaded disease. All right. We'll see what Steve does on this. This is a little promo here. Jessica Lee, the jazz singer, and I do a Bri Request show, and we did our last show. We have Santa for Seniors. Look at that graphic, will you? I could see it with my peripheral vision, Steve. You know peripheral vision smoking? Oh, yeah. Why? <laughs> you even know what that is? <laughs> oh, yeah. What? All athletes know about that. Well, how do you how do you use peripheral vision? Yeah, you use it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he doesn't know that I'm looking straight Did you ahead. Play a lot of point guard. Right? <laughs> yeah. uh, he, he stays filling right in. Smoking Jim actually doesn't know how to spell it, even though he's a writer, and he doesn't know that I'm looking at the TV screen and him. He's dressed up like it's a winter night, and here I am. I'm old and cold, and I got a short sleeve polo because I got to promote Pittsburgh Sports Line. So the well, Steve and Tony Dorsett Steve, had that amazing Steve, peripheral vision. Yes, Bo so. Steve got yeah. the short sleeves on. It must be a white thing. Yeah, it, 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 
Well, disclaimer right off the bat. Smoking Jim Frazier's statements and opinions are only his. I'll just share that I usually disagree 100% with them. And he's actually a nice guy and not a racist for the people who accuse him of being racist. But this is a great thing. Please donate blankets, Pittsburgh sports gear, gear, sweaters, anything. We got some donations in a can right under the clock as you go into the lobby. Double glass doors up from the lower parking lot. Smoking Jim parks there. He always sees people he knows, so he says. <laughs> so come on in there and uh, donate. It's open 24 hours and there's a camera so they can see what you're donating. And Smoking Jim, if you're taking out some sports gear for free, we'll stop you. All right, next up, another 501c3, Bethel Park Community Foundation. Look at what Steve did again. That peripheral vision clicked. <laughs> we, we want you, we have money for you. I'm on a trustee on the board. We have from $100 to, where are we at? $5,000. I had to double check. I've been talking too much. But $5,000 for you, we've given out over a million dollars in 26 years to people's groups to make Bethel, Bethel Park a better place. So carry on. Next up, Dave Cable likes to have a little fun at my expense. See what Steve did on this. See if you see my smiling face. Bang. Oh, bang. Oh, there it is. I want you for BPTV. Tell them Uncle Al Levine, the talking machine, wants you to be here like Steve. Look, he's filling in for three guys. Wow, that's right. Look at Buck. He's filling in for two guys. We actually had three in the control room last week because we had so many people here. This week there's a concert for the high school, so we lost out on the Marianos and the Rodes. So they couldn't make it. Marco's in the band. So Marco on camera in control room last week. But we want you for BPTV. If you're in high school, give a call, 412-831-3304. So the talking machine said, I can help out on the Pittsburgh Sports Line and other shows, of course. It's not just me on BPTV. We have about 20 producers. Volunteers are all here. And yes, we're all volunteers. So check it out. All right. We got next up. We're doing What's On Your Mind? Smoking Jim Frazier. Thanks, Al Levine, the talking machine. And if you want the green, I heart you fastball. got to see Levine. <laughs> I tell you, you what, man, we got a celebrity amongst us. <laughs> man, I'm listening to the fan this morning, and they said Nick Harry Callis stole the show at the Christmas party. He doesn't even wobble. know who Harry Callis was. <laughs> Doing the electric, That's the funny part about doing it. Doing electric slide from one end of the room to the other. I tell you. I heard that. he was doing the limbo too. Yeah, he won the limbo. How low can you go? <laughs> yeah. I can't even visually I picture can't it. That, man. So hey, and I pulled the ultimate brother move today, Alavina the talking machine. I bring in Christmas, Christmas gifts for. Marco and Mikey, and they're not here. So brother's taking them back home for next year. No, no, no. We have <laughs> it on tape. Here, <laughs> hand it to Steve. Hand the cards to Steve. I'll take them and give them to Dave. I, I give my gifts personally. <laughs> but, uh, Are you still an honest man? <laughs> I'm an honest man. See him next Christmas. But, hey, hell of being the talking machine, I tell you this, man is that uh, I'm worried about Saturday night. Saturday night I'm worried because it could be the night that Coach Tomlin has his first losing season. He's one game away. And, and I tell you what, the L.A. Raiders is the worst team for the Steelers to play because they're a quick scoring team. What and is they this got L.A. Raiders of which you speak? Or Las Vegas Raiders. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I, I went from Oakland to L.A. to Las, to Las well, Vegas. Well, let me, let me do a timeout. Yeah. No disclaimer on that. Steve was actually excellent, and that's why he's filling in for Chip. Chip will be back next week. He wasn't feeling good enough after his recovery. He's back to work, and he's still in some pain because it was a very rough transplant. 
Jim Ellenbogen, and I told him Chip would be here, so he's baking cookies with his daughters and granddaughters. Wow. That's how he operates. He wow. doesn't just he talk a, a good game. He's got a fan page out there, too. Yeah. I've seen the fan page. Well, you should him. see him on uh, different media that he does stuff, and he creates memes. And just to finish up. Yeah, go ahead. Is, you know, you always liked Derek Carr as a quarterback. Now he got Me, his, too. Now he got his college teammate, Adams. The tight end and isn't is back. he the greatest? Adams, Walt he's Waller's still doing back, too. Waller's yeah. back. The tight end is back. And they got probably the best running back in football. So it could be. Who's that? Well, I can't wait for the Robert Robinson. Spillane and Waller matchup. That should be a, <laughs> that should be a fun one. Hold it. <laughs> and, and that's what's on my mind. Thank you, Smoke and Jim. Game Steve, night. i got to disclaim your statement because <laughs> I've been saying <laughs> since Spillane is here, he's a great tackler. Yeah. But he was two steps behind. Now he's two and a half steps behind. Because I watch him exclusively, and he's always like, one, two, okay, he got him. I, I used to think he was good at stopping the run. Maybe I was just that one time he tackled Derrick Henry. Did he put it on him? Or but what? then he got blown up against Baltimore the other week. So he's well, been kind of they like all that, did. Yeah. They, they all did. Yeah, it's that's been their bugaboo. But, the last but he knows years. what huddle to go to. Well, Marcus Allen, I'm wondering if he'll be still confused Hold on which wait, huddle to go to. We'll, we'll talk know. a little bit about that because I have an opinion on mine on what's on your mind. You just, you guys, I don't they want gotta you to. They got to tell him. We don't want to steal. I don't want you to steal shirts. my thunder. <laughs> we're going to go. with the black and gold shirts. Black and gold, that's the team you go to. Well, we're going to go to Steve with what's on your mind besides what Smoking Jim instigated. <laughs> um, what's on my mind is uh, just recently on uh, I, my Pittsburgh Sports Memories con t- uh, podcast, yes. me and my co-host Tim had uh, George Hannon, who was a, uh, actually a fan, who was a witness to the Immaculate Reception in 1972. Guess who else was? You were there, too. Where were, what, now, what part of the field? He was on. Their seats were, like, opposite end of the way it was going. It went to the other end zone. Well, the here, way, while we're discussing, Bill Franciscus, with, yes. one of our guests, a good friend of mine, he's going to be there for the anniversary, and he bought tickets for his son and family. He was in the end zone when Franco caught the ball at that end zone. Now, I wonder if he, he would know if the it. ball hit Who the was? ground or Who not. Was? Huh? <laughs> Who was uh, it? Do you remember a guy named Bill Franciscus? That's my man. Well, yeah. then why did you ask who it was? No, I mean, who was in the end zone? Bill Francis was. was. Mm. Well, then Franco was, mm. too, at this Smoke point. Him. <laughs> Unless you're a Raiders <laughs> fan and you think it. <laughs> I got the question that. Well, was I'll, he even born? I'll give you his. Was he even born? Let me give you a Maybe secret. he watched it on TV when Smoke he was out him. of the market since it was blacked out. I, I just talked to him today, <laughs> and he said he met Franco and got to talk to him. And he had a. Franco said to him, Were you even born? Mm. So this might be a certain thing in how our city people think. <laughs> I won't. I won't uh, describe maybe, what and who. Maybe but went back. Listen to what he said. Listen to what he said. <laughs> now you'd say Bill's a good-looking guy, wouldn't you? Being a guy. No. Okay, because women say that too. No. Okay. Well, he told me he's sixty. I said I only got you by six years. Wow, I didn't know that. I thought Bill, I thought Bill was a lot younger than that. So did Franco. Wow. <laughs> And you you don't like Franco because you you call him uh, free lunch Franco. I love Franco. Oh okay. I'm glad we clarified that before we got too deep. He professes Steve, his love carry for on. <laughs> but he was there, and he said I was just a young kid because my dad was a deputy sheriff. His dad got tickets when he was a kid and went there with his uncles too. Wow. So it's a true story, Mm-mm-mm. unlike your story with your dad and uncle. <laughs> well, this is definitely, George was definitely there, and uh, he has a very interesting take on it about the uh, how much that, I couldn't believe how much cheap uh, season tickets were back then. Well, look then at baseball tickets how and even, stuff. How he even had to get the seats. He had to go, like, kind of through a, a guy to get the seats. Mm-hmm. And he went through, like, a trial period, mm-hmm. and it's, it's a whole interesting thing, so please listen to our podcast. I'm going to check interview. it out. And I yes. can listen on it anywhere. Yes, Spotify, iTunes, anywhere you can get a podcast, uh, you can you can find it. I brought Steve on exclusively to do shameless promotions. I, I that's and you passed. I, I did. Yeah. You passed. Well, I learned from the best. Thank you. <laughs> I, I respect you, and he's not even sucking up yet, <laughs> which is good. And he's starting to fill in for my 
Ed McMahon co-host. <laughs> yo, yeah, there you go. <laughs> that, that's smoking Jim. Well, thank you, Steve, for that. I appreciate it. And I believe anybody that said they were there, except smoking Jim, <laughs> because Myron Cope, he was announcing the game, and he went down to do yeah. interviews, yeah. and he's on record. Even smoking Jim knows this because mm -hmm. you know he's an honest guy. He knows that Myron Cope was in the elevator. Well, he so didn't know the they chief, won. The chief was in the elevator. That, he they were going too. down together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, that's yeah. part of it. Okay, Amy said, Smoking Jim, you look great. Oh, thank you, Amy. Ralph Williams, he says, Hello, guys. That's my man. Tim Davis said, Merry Christmas, Sportsline staff. Merry Christmas back at you. Chief Chuck McElroy said, Merry Christmas to the entire <coughs> Pittsburgh Sportsline team. I'm noticing a theme. Thank you very much, Chief. I work with Chief 30 plus years at the Post Gazette and Press wow. in a production department. Wow. We're still friends. And Amy also said, hello guys, Merry Christmas. So thank you for all of that. I appreciate all of you. And uh, what's on my mind? Well, first, I'm not a soccer fan. I've had discussions before. And the reason being, I was a pitcher my whole life. I handled a ball, and I'm an American, an American sport, handle a ball. I played center on a football team. So both sports that I played, I handled the ball. I played basketball briefly. But what do you handle when they throw it to you? A ball. Yep. What do they do in soccer when they throw it to you? You kick it or knock it down. Mm -hmm. So I'm honored, and I posted on Pittsburgh Sportsline that Messi finally won a World Cup. His first ever, he's one of the greatest soccer players. If he's not a GOAT, then he should be a GOAT from what I've heard and read. So I'm honored to hear that, but I gotta get down to Pittsburgh Steelers. I believe this is gonna be their first losing year, and there's numerous reasons, and some of the reasons came out during the game. Smoke and Jim wanted, I forget the third string quarterback that didn't dress. <laughs> he wanted Mason Rudolph. He wanted him to start all season. <laughs> now I've been a. He gets more popular the less he plays. Have well, you noticed that? I, I do. <laughs> and smoking Jim. It's kind of like me. The less I'm here, the more popular. I <laughs> yes, am. you're yeah. very you're very popular right now, my friend. You are you are uh, doing great. And uh, what I noticed is. Trubisky got signed here, and then they went with Kenny Pickett. And I don't like rookies starting because Smoking Jim proved to me 10 people in the last 30 years have been starting <laughs> quarterbacks their rookie year and did well. That's out of 10,000. I can think of two, I think, off the top of my head. Well, he gave about 10. Dan Marino, Ben Roethlisberger. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't think of anybody Russell else. Wilson. Wilson started. Mm -hmm. I mean, does Patrick Mahomes count? He, I mean, no. he sat the bench that yeah, one year. Yeah, the whole year. Yeah. Yeah. Played the last game in the season. Yeah, well, you know, I, I understand those things, and, you know, I appreciate it. And uh, Trubisky, he hasn't done much better than Pickett, but I notice a difference. Like the line gets in the way of people a little bit now because mm -hmm. they're, they're the only offense that everybody has started all the games. So if you don't learn to play a little better, or like I said, being a center, just step in front of somebody. Get in the way. Yeah, yeah. like if you see them going to your left or right, just take a half a step. Because they have to push you on the ground because you're point. allowed to use your arms and hands Good now. Point. So I mean, that's what I've been saying. And they're starting to do that. And Trubisky managed the game, and he actually looked like he knew what he's supposed to do. And guess what he did differently? Instead of having rust on him the last week, and I mean he was rusty with everything, and he was trying too hard, he got in the red zone, and you don't give the football away, let alone three times. Mm -hmm. And maybe one of them wasn't his fault, but guess what? The others definitely were. So he didn't give the ball away. He threw for under 200 yards, didn't have a touchdown. But guess what? We won the game. And it was a little shaky there. Did you notice Najee Harris can run like he used to? Mm -hmm. For all the people calling him a bust mm -hmm. for this year, you must take it back because how do you get hurt in preseason with what did he have, that fracture? Yeah, Liz, Liz, Liz Frank. Frank. Liz yeah. Frank. Yeah. And he had a steel boot. He had a Herman Munster shoe, like I told <laughs> on my show. And he had a run. 
He took it off after the sixth week, and I said, did you notice a difference? I do. He's able to jump, cut, run straight ahead instead of making a step with the other leg that's dead. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm still not sold on him. I well, that's because <laughs> what you've seen is one of the worst offensive lines. Mm -hmm. Well, I say they're mediocre now. I don't think they're as bad. They're, which is, here. I mean, not, Would you, what is that, damning by faint praise? You know? Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here, here's what I'll share with you. I think if you put them with any other team, and I watch all the teams, mm -hmm. and some of them have great offensive lines. Yes, sir. They're actually blocking guys, not like Open Door Moore, <laughs> you know, who lets everybody in, and that's my nickname. <laughs> and uh, I see it because yeah. I work. I, he's I, like running the ticket concession over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, and he's good at it. He's good at it. But I looked at these other teams, you know, that could run the football. And I don't see San Francisco. How. If you watch San Francisco, they're a perfect example. But well, I think I, their offensive coordinator is a, a hair better than all. Well, <laughs> so that, that, let me explain. Yeah. You yeah. haven't been on the show with the resume of Canada. Who but the Steelers would have hired him as an <laughs> offensive coordinator? True. And no disclaimer on me. It's my opinion, but I base it on facts. Look at his resume. Mm -hmm. Well, he was very. I thought he was good in college, but it hasn't. But my point, my it hasn't point. worked in the pros. Mm -hmm. yeah. My point, and then I look at it because I figure if we're fans, we think we're smarter than everybody. But these guys went to school, they coach teams, college, pro, so they must know something. So here's what I think. My dad used to always tell me, great coaches need good horses. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the horses, mm -hmm. how do you coach up what you have? If you have a playbook this thick, and you have a team that can't block, your playbook is five pages. Good point. Most teams do from two to five formations. We do one. <laughs> so when people go, they know what we're doing, uh, we can't do very much. Good point. And now with all the fans, I'll join in with you. Tom Little luck out again because he can coach him up when he's desperate. <laughs> he got two eight and eight seasons when Smoke and Jim said they don't want to be great. He predicted it. They just want to be <laughs> eight and eight. <laughs> well, now you can't be eight and eight unless you tie a game. Yeah. And we're not going to tie a game because who knows what we could score. Mm -hmm. And my problem is the offensive line isn't cured. And then, oh man, you talk about not having discipline. They put a stat up there, and it was about in the three quarters, no penalties for the other team. We had six penalties for 76 yards. Then we had somebody called Marcus Allen, named after a great running back, <laughs> who has one of those, I call these athletes with all the money, they have two cent brains. <laughs> and how can you go, like everybody here, I, I would think they can add one plus one equals two. You have your sideline, you have their <laughs> sideline. That's one plus one equals two. Why would you go over to their sideline? He side wanted to line? discuss where they were going after the game to eat. He wanted to hang no, out with them. No, he was, to, I heard Maybe he, he's making Christmas plans at a Christmas party, you know, go to. Yeah. Disclaimer, none of that is appropriate. <laughs> what he went over to is with the two cent brain to show how great he is and what a great player. He's just a scrub. If I'm the head coach, what I do is I sit him on the bench and I go, this is your last game as a Steeler. It's a common That's sentiment. how simple it is. Yeah. Didn't Jerry Glanville cut somebody in the middle of a game? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So Not that Jerry I'm, Glanville is that great of a coach. I'm saying but, yeah. that. And then we pay a guy $18 million to catch balls, which he does rarely. Then he goes and gets a first down. <laughs> and he, why? He gets confused on which way he needs to well, go. Well, again, and I can't. He doesn't know like that way. You know, I can disclaim that. your stuff, but none of it's appropriate. <laughs> His mouth was moving. So I assume words were coming out about how great of a receiver he is because mm -hmm. he caught the ball for a first down. Mm -hmm. So we get a 15 yard mm -hmm. penalty. Mm -hmm. Is there any discipline by Coach Tomlin? No, because these aren't Cowers players, so he's had a 10-year, 12-year drought on winning. You know, I think he's only won one, one I, I, playoff game. Let me say, oh, Cowers players did some, like, I remember Joey Porter talking yeah. trash before no, that no, one no, playoff game. No, 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 but here's game. my thing with it. 
He it, won a Super Bowl with the players that Cowher had. But, I had. mean, Cowher's players mm. did some stuff, too. Oh, I mean, wait a second. <laughs> Cowher was one of the worst clock management players. Well, yeah. You know, coaches yeah. with the players. And then he would spit on them all so they would listen to him because <laughs> the chin would win. But, I mean, you had all these things happening, and those were his players when he had to leave with his wife having cancer and other bad rumors about him. So he left the Steelers. They didn't fire him. He left. I think he once he won his Super Bowl, he was he was out. Well, yeah. his wife did have cancer. Yeah, his wife was sick. And, and there were bad rumors he's about never, a secretary yeah. and stuff he's like that. He's never coming back to coaching either. He's having. Why I mean, would he? I mean, it, you get paid all that money to sit in New York and second guess and never have to. You can criticize yeah, everybody, yeah. and you're not accountable for anything <laughs> you say. Yeah. So, it's kind of like here. It's, well, <laughs> exactly. But my point is. He did discipline pay players and all that, but how does Deontay get away with it? He went back in the game. If I'm the coach, not that I'm an expert, but guess what? You broke all our discipline rules. You cost us 15 yards, and you know they scored after that when we couldn't score. So I mean, I would have sat him down and said, you know what? You might miss next week too. And that doesn't happen with the Steelers. So all of you can believe they'll have a winning season. I don't know if they can win one out of the final three. So we will see. That's my opinion, and I stand by it. Can't disclaim me. I'm giving you facts as I see it. And coaching, I don't listen to the rubber meets the road, which it hasn't. The standard is the standard. I don't see a standard except mediocrity because the losing seasons never happened. And then next man up, who is it? Where are they? Like mm -hmm. offensive linemen? If I blocked like that on my team, there would have been a second or third stringer yeah. put in my place as yep. center. Yep. We don't see anybody coming in, and it's actually not a good thing that they've all played every game. Because <laughs> we're getting near the end of the season. In my mind, I watch them. And open door more lets them in. And, you know, there's a couple guys that are doing some blocks. You know, Daniels or whatever is a guard. He's actually blocked some guys. He did a couple blocks for Najee to get past the first rush in the backfield of their players. So there is some hope there. All right, we're coming back in 10 seconds with Fiction and Fact with Smoking Jim's Almanac. Great to see you. That's Anthony. Great He's to see you, Anthony. Look how Take big him he home. Is. Yeah, they grow up, buddy. <laughs> Look, I'm pointing on the camera. I'm so excited. <laughs> All I can say is three words. OV, OV, OV. I tell you what, you got to take your hat off to him, Al Levine, the talking machine. Smoking Jim. He's one of the greatest one-trick ponies 800 in hockey. Oh he, he sets gold. up on the roughly, right side. Roughly 300 more than Crosby. Hold, hold it. Let me, <laughs> Is the argument over, Al? No. Over? Let me give you the argument. He'll be the greatest goal <laughs> scorer for a couple reasons. You he don't like the Russians. <laughs> no. You're not even listening to me. Again, disclaim all his facts. They're not the truth. Ovi's a one-trick so player. He goes to the right side of the goaltender, and he scores like a machine. He never gets hurt. He's always healthy. Never misses games with injuries. Doesn't do much to have that happen. He does push people around. He, he plays physical. He hits people. He hits people, but when he can one, get the shots in question. on them. Yeah. The greatest hockey player to ever play is Gretzky. Will he go past Gretzky in goals? He's a good chance. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. going to beat everybody. He'll be the highest goal scorer. But here's what, here's what I want to share with you. How many points do Crosby and Ovi have? Well, Ovi has 800 goals. No, no, Crosby points. Has I don't know how Smoking Jim, you're talking like a, a goals, person yeah. that's not even a scout. <laughs> <laughs> There's two components to scoring. Assists, yeah. Assists, Assists. and goals. Yeah. They're almost tied with points. That's true. That means in hockey, that's so true. you ignored what my statement that's was, true. and you want me to be straight and honest <laughs> with you. For the end of I this year. I just want to give the guy a little credit. 
Well, we guess what? Guy. He's one of the guys. You only know hockey from being on <laughs> Pittsburgh Sports Line. <laughs> but I know it now. <laughs> All you know is a one-trick pony, and that's Hey, Ovi. look at the handsome guy. Okay. But this is what I wanted to talk about, El Levine, the talking machine. Oh, you just did talk about it. i tell you what, it. being a little kid and being able to see Roberto Clemente's 3,000 hit, and a few months later being able to see the immaculate reception with Franco Harris, and I've been lucky um, to be able to uh, friend Franco over the years somewhat, brought, it, brought him to the City League Hall of Fame banquet, and and um, this I'm on the state, state of Pennsylvania Hall of Fame committee, and we're going to present Franco with a $5,000 check at our next banquet. And Franco told me, Al Levine, the talking machine, that he doesn't want the money he wants it to go to a charity. So I need Steve Fisher to help me get a 5013C. We got to ring it up. <laughs> hey, smoking Jim. Hey, I can do a brother move. I can give him a $5,000 check and he can endorse it right back. No, so no. This, so, so me, this me, the let smoking me help Joe you. Memorial, <laughs> memorial <laughs> Fund for Smoking Jim. Or, yeah, no, let me, let me make it real. I'll give you 10%. <laughs> let, let me give you it real straight. Franco <laughs> Harris is a very smart, kind guy. Yeah. He has nonprofits. He has a nonprofit that bought the Crawford Grill. So he has charities he can give it to to help other people. But he told me he wants to give it to a charity. Guess what? And he, he looked me in the eye like. Well, he knows that you're smoking Jim and don't have a clue. <laughs> but here's something that he, and I'll finish up with this. Okay. Franco Harris shared something. We gave him the mic. <laughs> you let him talk. Mistake number one. <laughs> he talked. He talked more he than talk. two minutes. Yes, he did. But he said something that, that that had a lot of value. He encouraged all the young athletes. Now they only play one sport. My man Buck plays at least two sports. He plays basketball. Who's the head coach at Bethel Park down in Calabria, right? Yeah. On I North. Think. So they got a good coach. I think Rico is Rico coaching over there too. I'm not sure. Somebody said in the crowd that Rico was coaching over there. Well, you I gotta got rabbit Buck. ears, my friend. You I don't gotta, hear what I'm saying. I got to ask You Buck. got rabbit ears. Oh. Franco's a good guy. But this is what he said. This is what he what? said. guess what? Jessica Lee can help him with nonprofits. She can help she me knows one. Non-profits. She knows nonprofits. <laughs> no, here's oh. what she'll do. There's paperwork, and it costs something called money, which you don't have. Well, I got 5000 I can get it. <laughs> that won't do it. The 5000 would go to the 501c3. You have to have the charity first. Okay. So you'd be a liar, okay. and you don't want to be a liar. Well, I got till April. To well, get the you don't have a 501c3, do you? Uh, I, I can have it by Let April. me repeat it for the third time for <laughs> no, all you watching. No, I don't. But well, this what would be the mission of this charity? I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> That's, what would be the mission statement Steve, of, of Spoken I'm, I'm Jim's charity? I'm glad you brought him on. <laughs> well, is, well, what I, are you benefiting? What cause well, are we benefiting well, let here? Let me just say what Franco <laughs> said that, Helped a lot of, that, that would help a lot of kids. Franco Harris said when he spoke at the banquet that kids should play more than one sport. He said, and when he was in high school, had he just concentrated on one sport, it would have been a mistake because he thought he was a really good basketball player, and that's the sport he would have concentrated on. And we would never have had his football success. Well, so that makes that sense. Was, that was very Because I saw your younger pictures. And you didn't just play football. He was Urkel. He was running fast because they were chasing him because they were calling him Urkel. He had the biggest glasses on, and he looked just like Urkel. I posted a picture up. But Franco's a good man that knows nonprofits, so he don't need you. Because I'll make a call. I'm personal friends with Franco. Guess what I would tell him? I go... Just buy him a glass of wine like you can, did can for I me. Can I be on the board of trustees of your foundation? <laughs> yeah, do, do, do we get to take like a trip somewhere? I, I could be like <laughs> El Bundy with that one dollar when he was in the exotic dance. You get pulled in the back. That's all I want to do, Franco, with that five thousand. Let me explain to all of our fans. Smoking Jim's not an innocent guy. <laughs> He We're he has he long. has a wad of Meeting ones. People that need to go to well, smoking Jim has a wad of ones. He can pull out guy. his ones. <laughs> Get a close up, Steve, of his wad of ones. Anybody I know, and I just I experienced this as a young man. 
that had a wad of ones. It's easy to count. It's easy to count when you can count by a wad. The, the, no, this is a family-friendly show. Any man that I know. Maybe that's what we should, the charity should be for, be for financial literacy. Oh, well, he needs it. Yours, that'll be under advisement. But let me finish my point about men that have ones in their pocket. They go, this is a family-friendly show. I'm making an exception. Disclaimer on myself. They go to strip clubs. Let him deny that. Well, he just likes to support those single mothers out there. <laughs> yes. Well, here, I got to thank, I don't know if you know this lady, Michaela Sky said, go Pittsburgh Sports Line and Pittsburgh Sports yes, Memories. Yes, I, I, I do know her. So uh, she's watching. Yeah. Amy said, uh, hope you feel better, Chip. Greg Kirby, my catcher from my baseball days in Green Tree, said, Happy holidays, my friend. He knows me. He doesn't know you guys. <laughs> Michael Thompson, my uncle. He goes, uh, Uncle Al, thank you. Thank you, my nephew. He's in Arizona. Wow. He's watching us. Thank you for watching. All the way in Arizona. Nice. Paul Haley, uh, former Bethel Park resident. He's watching us, and he's a great guy. Loves all the posts that I put up there and loves us on Pittsburgh Sports Line. That's what's up. He said he loves our show. We're entertaining. Appreciate it. And that. sometimes we're factual. <laughs> so we're covering that. That's why we run into one. <laughs> All right. I got I to gotta tell Buck in the control room, we're going to go to on location. Uh, one of my heroes at BPTV, him and Aaron Ward, Devin Shea, they helped me to have all these winning, award-winning shows. They helped us from the beginning, and Devin got married to a nice woman. Almost made them Danny. to the wedding. Smoke and Jim promised them he'd be at their wedding. I was on my way. They were asking me, would he Your be here? <laughs> I told them all, Smoke and Jim won't be here. Okay, <laughs> on location. That was a great graphic there. Uh, Michael Thompson, my nephew, goes, you guys are a hoot. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank we you, salute sir. you, Mike. <laughs> Thanks for the shout-out back. Uh, we got hired to do a Donnybrook boxing. Pittsburgh against Ireland. They did it five, six years ago. Rich Donnelly wanted us to know if we could do it. He's so happy. He said, I'm glad you guys can do it wow. at the Priory Hotel on North Side there. They call it North Shore near PNC Park. Great hotel. And uh, Amy just said, Smoking Jim, you on fire. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. <laughs> well, really, he's not. He's like a wet noodle over there with what he's talking about. <laughs> That's terrible. So we're going to be doing the Donnybrook there and uh, look forward to that. Uh, uh, Master Zhang at Providence School. They're the only school that helps uh, disabled children on their curricul curriculum. They have Taekwondo as a requirement in a class, and he teaches it. The only school in the country with Taekwondo. He taught me to do a Taekwondo forearm break of two boards at my grand opening of a show. We didn't win an award, but we tried our best. It was the best show I ever did, yes, sir. and we're doing that. And then uh, we got asked to do uh, another show in, uh, what is it, April, that we're going to be doing a show uh, with the Western Pennsylvania Hall of Fame. Oh, great. That's Smoke right. and Jim, I was supposed to talk about with you. But as you know, I talked, Bill Kai said to talk to Smoke and Jim, so I did. And uh, I said we're going to meet on it, and we didn't. <laughs> So we're going to play it by ear. When is the event? April 1st or something? April something. First day of April. No, no it's, April it's, 20. It's, it's towards the end of yeah. the month. See, he's on the board, so he does know a little, a couple things. And that's what we're looking forward to. So we have some on-location things. we got some other people, uh, some bars and restaurants. It's been so tough with them because, like Smoke and Jim, people don't want to work. <laughs> So they get hired, and then they don't come in. He's really busy with his charity. Outfit. Well, if he knew what a 501c3 was, then we might do that. And uh, Paul Haley says, watching now, Alan, love the show. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas to all the Pittsburgh Sportsline followers. Amy missed us. 
I told her that the next three games the Steelers can win and have a winning record. Wow. She goes, she hopes the Steelers win Saturday. All right. Well, you know it's Christmas Eve, Eve, and Tomlin has a connection with that because he's pulling miracles out. So <laughs> maybe Santa can come in. Because I don't know what you do with an offensive line. And I forgot to mention, since we're going to open this up to just open talk, how did the Steeler defense stop the running game wow. with 21 yards? Wow. Did you notice a guy that's healing up who's been yeah. a mystery man? Yes, sir. I didn't bring him up because I had so much to talk about, and I'm so disappointed in the coaches because a shout-out to Chip. He thinks it's all the players' fault. Well, if the – coaches don't discipline players it's the coach's fault so they got to take some blame tj watt played one of the better games he's come back mm -hmm. from knee surgery which they said wouldn't affect him let me explain arthroscopic surgery they're cutting into your knee to yes, scrape sir. stuff out yes, everybody needs time to heal look at chip with a knee transplant so tj was getting blocked by one guy the last couple games this time, he was actually ending up in the backfield. And if you notice, the last couple of weeks, he was running around because he couldn't get through. He, and he, now... He's playing with one arm. It is that, that Well, you notice up. it, yeah. but a lot of most yeah. people don't. They well, go, there was one, he was tackling the Baltimore quarterback, and he would have had him for a five-yard loss. But you could tell his arms just, he had to swipe with the well, off arm because he couldn't... How about you have him. a peck muscle that's, tear. Yeah, that's, that's Think the about, yeah. now smoking that's Jim's right. muscular, he's a power lifter and a power eater. So. Well, the rest of us are just you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. If, you, if you tore your pectoral muscle and didn't need surgery, uh, try ripping a muscle and tell me how it heals mm. in six weeks. Mm. They say when an injury's not a break, it's a bad injury. It takes longer than breaks to heal. So then he had arthroscopic, then he had the pec, and how do you work out? He actually looks a little weaker mm -hmm. with his rush, mm -hmm. and his speed isn't there yet mm -hmm. either, except this past week he did show flashes of it. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you, he's a one-armed bandit, not the gambling time in the casinos. <laughs> but no, I, I see that happening, and that's why I'm hopeful for down the road. And you get near the end of the season, and let's see, uh, we have a coach that's known for never having a losing season. So mediocrity is our goal. <laughs> so I think we could do it. <laughs> and what you this, guys got anything you want to talk about? Steelers, Penguins? Sure, I, what I about got, Penguins and things? Well, I, I just wanted to mention the, the transfer portal. In college Let's get football. you with mm -hmm. your... Yeah, yes. and I did. I did. Uh, everybody's transferring nowadays. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going. Mm -hmm. I know Pitt picked up... Uh, Phil Yurkovic, who's yes, yeah. turned him yes, down sir. twice. Finally, on the third time, he came. <laughs> and they picked up a kid from Penn State. And so all these kids are going every which way in this transport portal. And it was kind of like a novelty last year when USC came in and gave, but they gave Addison $3 million, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is actually more than George Pickens makes as a <laughs> rookie yeah. wide receiver well, in the NFL. Here's my rebuttal. With all the millionaires that are Pitt alumni, where were you? You brag about well, your program, and you didn't put up any money until afterwards. I gave all my money to smoking gym. Okay. <laughs> well, then, if it's in his, if it's in his 501c3, yeah. it's called It's For Me. <laughs> yeah. He does it, It's For Me. But I had a question. I made the point that with the USC quarterback that we got. Mm. He was not very good. No. Well, here was Now my, he's gone again. Yeah, but yeah. here was my point. Why would he come here after we had a championship year with a quarterback that took five years to become great? And he transferred here where Narduzzi got rid of Whipple, mm. who made Kenny Pickett, mm. Kenny Pickett. I, I was never a Whipple. Whipple didn't, Ripple, Whipple's offense wasn't like a coherent offense. It was more just a collection of plays. It was almost like watching someone play Madden football where like, oh, I'm just going to pick this play today. Oh, let's pick this one. There didn't seem to be a lot of cohesiveness there with that. But I, and so they well, got Well, what I, I like, like, yeah. I don't know much about the – I remember the other Signetti that was there under Wanstat. Yeah. I really liked him. Yeah, the dad. All. No, it was the other son. Oh, uh, the other – Kurt. Yeah, the I think brother. it's Kurt. Yeah, yeah. And this is Frank Jr. Right. Frank Sr. just passed away. I know. I saw that. Yeah. And – um. 
But I, my main point was out of uh, I was just reading an article on SI and it said out of fifty four percent of the kids that go into transfer portal, like forty one percent of those kids will not find a new school. Right. So it's become mm-hmm. a problem in college football in general. Where, like, you know, if you think you're going to jump ship to a better situation, even look at Slovis, he got the start, but now yeah, he's, but my he's point, out again. My point with him, with him coming here from being at USC, which is a big major school, you're coming to the minor leagues here. No offense <laughs> meant. Well, it, well it's, it's becoming like Look at that. our competition that we had in the ACC when we were champions. Well, they're doing the same thing to the, the quarterback at um, North Carolina. I hear I hear rumors. I don't have any. I've just heard rumors He's that they're good. offering him five million dollars. But I got, I, little, I, I got yeah. a little insight. Yeah. I got a little insight on that. I got a. Um, I hope you would. You know, so I, many people. You don't well, talk about it. I can't mention any names. Y- you always do, but go ahead. But um, I know a coach. Um, What's his at name? At Penn State, uh, Terry Smith. Thank um, you. And he told me he always that, mentions them. Uh, he yeah, told I, me he that used they the put away. He yeah. told me they put away fifty to sixty million dollars. You yes, know, there, you, just to interrupt you, the, you kids. know that Penn State has the largest alumni group in the country. No, I didn't know that. Let me emphasize it again. They're the largest. But this Out is of what all I, the schools? But yeah. this is what My I My daughter do went there, and that's part of their promo. The reason oh, wow. 41% doesn't get picked up, these kids are not necessarily jumping in the portal. Deion Sanders, for example, is put 70 kids from Colorado that he doesn't want. Yeah, in the, and so they got to go into the portal to try to find yeah. something else. See, these coaches are getting rid of kids now. You know what I mean? That's you don't what work would out you do? Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they get rid of you because they want the And then Dion brought, it, brought, what, his son and his two well, sons. the yeah. starting quarterback. Yeah. Well, hold it. Safety. What did Tomlin's son do out of Maryland? <laughs> he, I he heard he's in the portal. Canada. Well, no, well, no he's, at, he's at Boston College now. He went in the portal. Already? He Boston was at Maryland. College. He sat the bench at Maryland. Last year he played for Boston College on their bench. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. He's just been going from bench to bench. Well, when was he ever any good in high school? Well, he never made any all-star teams, but he's a Tomlin. So Did he even start in so the he team? Took a, he, took a, he took a scholarship off of uh, – and, and, and listen, I will not rest – until I see a white cornerback in the NFL. That's a shame. I know you don't. I don't like no re- yeah, well, and I it's mean, been 20 years since Adam NFL. Archuleta was a safety. Uh, uh, he now he's tough. announcing games. Yeah, but. he does a good job. He was Let tough. me interrupt. He's Greg Kirby guy. said the Carolina game was definitely TJ's best game since he came back, as it should have been. Noticeably better. Thank you, my old green tree fan. <laughs> and there's That's something that he point. does. He's able to – Push those um, offensive tackles' hands Who? down off of them, TJ. He's yeah. the best at that. He can push because if you can't get your hand, you know they try to get their hands. When you played, L, you led with your helmet and then came up. We and weren't allowed to put hands yeah. out. Now these guys are sticking their hands yeah. out, and TJ so well, they strong. They teach them. He pushes Wait, them. They teach them. Like those ninja moves. They like teach them the grab them. to grab yeah. inside. Yeah. And then when they take you outside, let go. Why do you think there's holding on every play? Every play. Every That's play. what they teach them. I know coaches have told me, hold it tight and, and, and that close. And light skin brother, what, number 56, he got a spin move that's out of this world. Oh, Highsmith. Highsmith got yeah. a spin move. Yeah, but move. guess why? His family They're was concentrating all there. on They're Cam Hayward. They're doubling or tripling the Hayward and TJ's got two credit. blockers. Does his, Imagine. Family ever, does his family ever leave Carolina? They've never <laughs> been to a Pittsburgh game, but here they go. Five minutes from their house, they show up. How about they show with their hands out 60 probably. of them? How about they showed his parents, Highsmith made a good play, and they were still sitting down. Then they saw the camera, and yeah, they stepped up. Yeah, looking at the TV, looking at their phones. Yeah. yeah. What they kind did. of move was that? Yeah. They were on delay. No, but Highsmith, <laughs> I want to see him get a big contract so then he can go somewhere else. Well, I like it because he only bought his mom a, a minivan, so he. I want to see him upgrade his mama's car. <laughs> How many millions does it take? But why would you even show that on YouTube? That ain't nothing. You, he bought well, her a it's brand a really new nice, minivan. Is it like a Pacifica? <laughs> no, a nothing like that. It was about, it was about it. basic. It's a Here, Dodge, Dodge, Dodge Ram. <laughs> Let me, remember, remember earlier in the show I was talking about two-cent brains for athletes? Yeah. Deontay Johnson, Marcus Allen, yeah. Highsmith, too. I didn't have a problem with Marcus Allen. You don't have a problem with anybody doing something they shouldn't do. I don't like Deontay Johnson, so I got a lot of problems with him. 
Yeah, but Marcus Allen did one of the dumbest things I've seen Listen, in football. Can, can I give you an example? I give didn't me know two. that was a penalty. Remember the year Greg Lloyd played Dan Marino on Monday night? He said, if I get a chance, yeah, I'm going to put, put him, him in the, the middle week. of the next week. When he, hit, when he hit Dan Marino and hurt him, the Miami team wanted to fight him. He went in their huddle and said, I didn't do nothing cheap. And that's guys used to go on other teams' huddle all the time. It was a timeout. Smoke I didn't know it was a penalty. Yeah, but let me explain something to you. We we I've first, never heard that before. Yeah, yeah we first of never all don't. Seen it. We first of all don't know how old you are, <laughs> and football has changed. That's true. You right. you suffer from CTE. No that offense. Is right. That is true. No offense that's to anybody true. with CTE. That is true. He's forgetful. Doesn't know stuff. He only knows things that he wants to bring out and put somebody down. Negativity. <laughs> If it's negative, he can come up with, he got a hundred things negative to say. He's my best friend. So I know him for 11 years. He goes, machine, you know more about me than anybody I know. So if I know that, I know 2% about him. That's all I know. And football was played differently. Do you think Dick Butkus could play today? He wouldn't make any money. He no, he could he, he play he free the way he hit? No, no, he couldn't. He, he'd be out the league. He'd be suspended. What about Jack him. Lambert? Be suspended. What about Mel Blunt, who they changed the game with? He knocked guys down before they walked yeah. off the line. Jack Tatum. All yeah. them guys. How could yeah. they play football today? Dick Night Train Lane. How about the Joe line. Green? Had That's one right. Of, he did get <laughs> close line people. I about, think he still holds the record for most interceptions in a season yeah, at, yeah. what, 12? Yeah. 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 Ralph Williams says, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. And, you know, all these guys, they couldn't play nowadays because the game's changed. It's changed, yeah. Definitely. Like, how do you get called with roughing the passer when you just graze by him? You put your hand up and it glazes his uh, helmet. helmet. That's it, a, that's yeah. a and then how do they call? Well, it depends on the quarterback, too. Well, if it's, if yeah. it's Tom if Brady, Brady, it's a then, penalty. Yeah, if, it, if it's like Kenny Pickett. Did you see what they did? The Ravens did the Kenny Pickett when they threw him on the ground, had his oh, face yeah. mask. They, it's like that's a penalty yeah. normally, but, yeah, I guess. No, things of smoking, Jim. You're a smart guy, you're a great scout, but we don't know really know for sure <laughs> that you miss the game passed you by. <laughs> and rules have never been something that you follow. That's true. That's so true. I know that much about you. You know, when they told you go hit that guy, you would do it. If they told Urkel to go run to the line, <laughs> Urkel ran through the line. So I know you have that experience. Now, you, you're a guy that said you wouldn't shake hands with guys. Yeah, never before and after a game no, never. so that's now you or then 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 oh wow. yeah now he doesn't play yeah. well, he's not that's true. he's only a player oh, late man. at night <laughs> wow. just just he ask doesn't have to shake their hands just ask <laughs> i don't know about that i'm not getting into that it's a family show a uh, little thing, Steve, with you with Penguins. What do you think of the Penguins, even though they got three guys together for 17 years? <laughs> they they went through a losing streak. Everybody in Pittsburgh, including Smoke and Jim, would brag about them losing. When they won seven in a row, I heard nothing but crickets from Smoke and Jim. Well, they just lost to Carolina, so do they stink again, I no, guess? No. <laughs> no, well, he doesn't know. Yeah. If they lose three in a row. I think they play tonight. I don't know. They're the playing the Rangers, Rangers tonight. tonight. So maybe maybe that guy from the Rangers can uh, injure Crosby again, elbow him. Look how it costs them the playoffs. Yeah. Imagine like Smoke and Jim believes take out the best player. Like Joey Porter was an innocent guy trying to take out Marino. They took out Crosby last boy. year in a Rangers game, and we lost the series where we could have won that series. Without Crosby, we couldn't. Good point. And well, plus that's we were on like our third goalie. Well, you or me could have been playing goalie at yeah, that Yeah, I would have just stood in front. <laughs> well, we're about ready to wind it down. Formal, we know we got 24 seconds, Steve. We're going down. Steve's on the ball. Buck's in the control room telling him, watch, these guys are almost done. Merry Christmas to all of you. Thank you for watching. Thanks for all the support. We're going to keep doing Facebook Live every Tuesday night next year, and next week's our last show of the year. So we look forward to that. Please stay Joey strong. Thank you.